Hi guys, thanks for taking the time to tune in. So today I'm going to go over an overview of Fusion 360 Manage Extension. So Autodesk um, introduced the Manage Extension in like April, May time 2021. And it's not to be confused with Autodesk's Fusion Manage PLM platform. So the Manage Extension itself gives you access to change management, release process management and unique item identification within the product. So it's accessible through Fusion 360. So I want to take you through how that looks when you install the extension and just a basic workflow on uh, change control with revisions, item assignment as well as the change release workflow and then how you get access to the um, extension itself within the application. So let's take a look at Fusion 360. So inside the application once you have uh, installed, well purchased, um, activated and kind of installed the manage um, extension then you'll have access to this small home up here just on your um, panel at the top. So if we take a look at the properties of this part, by default you get some general properties and now that you've got the extension you'll have access to the managed properties as well and those managed properties include the item number, life cycle, revision state and change order. So if we start to add some information to this part, so if we update the property for um, the description first of all, uh, and we'll just call it, I don't know, size D or something. So if we start to add more information, um, this this is all obviously gathered within the, the data of the part, making it easier for people to find and work with. So if we close that off just now and we go up to the Manage tab. So we've got access to this home here, which we're going to go into in just a second. And then we've got access to the Manage tab at the top. So what the Manage tab does is gives us access to assign item numbers and allows us to push the part through two types of release process. So we can do a quick release or we can do a complete release with change order. So we're going to take a look at both of those, but we're going to start with assigning an item number first of all. So as we assign an item number, it will ask us to save. Once we've saved the part, it will go through a process of um, generating the number once we submit it through into the um, assign item number um, generator. So what it will do is it will generate a number for us. So we'll click on submit and it will go away and generate that item number. So once the number's there and available, it will tell you what the number is and we can click on that and get access to the actual details of this part. Um, but we can also do that through the properties dialog box as well. So I'm going to close this to show you. So I'm going to right click and see properties again. And we can see now that within the property dialog box, we've got an item number. So if I click on that number because it's linked back to Fusion Manage, so within the Fusion Manage extension itself, it takes you into um, the interface within the application and shows you all of the details that we've just kind of a seen and went through. So the details of our part, the item number, the, the description, a thumbnail, um, we can also view it, we can see any change orders and any change logs as well. So this tab here, this home tab here, gives us access to the Fusion Manage extension teamed up with Fusion Team. So we do also have access to change your team in here. We can get access to the browser um, online. So if we click on the cog, it takes us into our team. And what it does is it introduces the process tab at the top right as well. So when we click on process in the web browser, we get access to our manage um, extension, where it allows us to see things like the charts, and um, all of our dashboard, including our outstanding work, any bookmarks and any recent uh, items that we've uh, kind of worked on in the last, um, in, in, in history basically. So this is, this is the web browser content, but as I keep mentioning, and I probably will mention this quite a lot, is a lot of this is integrated into Fusion 360 already. 
So if we want to go back to the part, you can see the tab up at the top here where we've got access back to the physical part. So we can click on the tab and it takes us back to the physical part. We can close the properties and we can take it to the next stage. So we're going to take a look at a quick release. So the quick release is going to put it into a life cycle, which is pre-production. So we can see here that it's got the part A, the item number, and the life cycle is unreleased. So we're going to submit it through a quick release. And what it will do is it will put it into pre-production life, um, life cycle and give it a numeric revision of one. So we can see that information on the screen. So I'm going to close that off just now. And then from here, what we can do is go back into the properties. And now that we're back into the properties, you can see the difference between the last properties dialog box and the new one. So we've now got the item number, but we've got a life cycle as well, which is pre-production. And we've got a revision, which is number one. So if we close that off, and then uh, if you want to, you know, you can go back to the part number at any, t um, sorry, the part at any time by clicking on the the home up at the top as well. So we click on the home. And even if we navigate away from here, we can click on recent data. And you'll see the recent data that we've been working on. So this is a list with columns that are related to, you know, the information that you want to see about your parts. So if we want to go back and see all that information about our part, we can say go to, and it'll take us back to the part. So this is very much like Fusion Team this section here. So we can see an, an overview. Um, we can see components, which is a new preview, which was just introduced in November um, as a preview to um, look at component level within assemblies. Uh, we've got properties, and then we can look at a view of the part, even though we've got access behind us as well. Okay. So at the moment, it's not in a change order. So you can see here, we don't have a number for change order. So the next thing we're going to do is actually push it in to a change order and release it. So we're going to take it through a release uh, with change order. So this is slightly different. So this is going to um, incorporate a bit more um, interaction from you. So we're going to create the um, change order first of all. It's going to ask us for lots of different um, information about this part, the reason why we're creating this change order. So it's actually um, quite a generic process for anyone who's ever done a change order before. So it'll ask you um, kind of a, what the title is. So it's first release um, of Elbow. Um, basically information that you know you can search upon. Um, the approvers in this instance is only going to be me because I'm the only one involved in this process. But you can have multiple approvers. Uh, the reason for change is already specified by this change order workflow. And that's why this is actually quite useful and easy and simple to pick up. So I'm going to click on initial release and then I'm going to give it a bit of a description. Oh, this is ready for release. Okay. So then we can give it a priority. Um, in this instance, I'll, I'll say medium. And then we've got reviewers and again, because I'm the only one in this process at the moment, I'm going to pick myself. But for instance, if you want to have more reviewers reviewed by and remaining information will be updated when you choose different reviewers and approvers through the process that you take with the change order. So I'm going to save the information that I've put in there and it takes me to another screen. So the good thing about this, this is again, I keep saying it, it's all within the application. So I'm still in the application producing all of this um, kind of a critical information about the change of this part and how it's being released into the system. So we've got the details of everything we've just went over in the change order. We've got the affected items. We've got any due dates, which we can apply. We've got the approval workflow, which is super important. Uh, we've got attachments and we've got the change log. So everything I do to the part or anyone does to the part will be uh, recorded in the change log. So if we go back to the um, affected items, what I need to do in here is I actually need to edit the life cycle and I need to tell it that I want to push it to production. So I'm ready to go to production. So once I've done that, I'm going to save it. And once I've done that, 
I can go back to the approval workflow and I can see actually what's happening. So it's in the process of open, all right? So then up at the top here, I've got this drop down list where I can view what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to cancel, I'm going to fast track, or I'm going to submit to work, okay? So if I do any of this process, what will happen is you'll see the blue square um, or triangle, rectangle in this instance, move along to each of those different phases. So each of those phases are basically how you see the next phase of the workflow or should I say the life cycle of this part, okay? So I'm going to push it to fast track just to give you an idea. So I'm going to approve. All right, so I'm going to click on approve and what it will do is it will update and show me that it's been pushed to the approval state. All right, so all the information I've got is here. I can go into the change log and I can see that information's been recorded. So I'm going to close out of that and then I'm going to right click on the elbow and go back to properties. And when I look at the properties this time, I'll see that there's been a change order applied to the management of this file. So I can go ahead and click on that change order and it will open up all of the information that we just seen when we went through the process. So again, we're inside the application, all of the information is available and it's clear and it's precise and it's, it's, it's simple. And that's why I think I enjoy it so much. Um, I can only see this process getting better. It's not by any means in the same level as, you know, your full on blown data management like Vault and things like that. But if you're already a Fusion 360 user, then I'm assuming you're using the product because it's simple, it's easy to use. And therefore, this is just another addition to that simple workflow that you use every day. Okay. So here we can see all the information. We can see the approval workflow. We can see any attachments. We can see all the information about that. And it's all available on the browser as well. Okay. So we do a bit of a quick refresh. We can see that the change um, has been added to our recent items. We can click on that. And we can see all the information that we need to see about it. Again, affected items. We can go into the affected item. We can actually view online. And this could be someone who doesn't have access to Fusion. So if you're working with the Manage extension, not everyone in your team needs to have the Manage extension. Do you know, the guys who are creating the parts and releasing them, yeah. But the guys who want to view and see what you've done, again, will have access to that through fusion team as a participant okay so there's various different things that we can do with collaborating through the fusion manage extension with the already fusion team kind of a features that you get with fusion 360 anyway okay so that was just to give you an idea guys of how it all works inside the application so how do you access to it so the easiest way to get access to the extensions is through fusion 360 itself up at the top here in the right corner, you've got access to all of the extensions via the extension manager. So in this instance, if we click on manage, you can see exactly what you've got access to in the manage extension. Unique item numbers, release process management and change management. Exactly everything that I've just went over very quickly as an overview to basically how it all works. Okay. So again, guys, it was just a quick overview to show you and to give you my kind of a feelings on how I see this product kind of a moving forward in the future. Data management is a massive part of what we do when we create CAD, CAM, computer aided engineering data. And therefore, keeping it simple, keeping it light, um, allowing other members of the team to be able to view. Again, I just want to show you if we go back to the data panel, that all of the information that we've kind of a built through the process that we've taken is all still available to um, anyone who's using the data panel. You can see I've got the file open because at Autodesk have introduced this new open by and who's working and collaborating with the part. There's also significant flag icons um, that represent revision milestones. Again, when you look at the history, you will see these milestones. You'll know that it's been revised, who's working on it and, and you know when it's ready to be moved to the next stage. It's all interactable collaboration 
in the application as well as on the web browser. Okay, so you can get access to that through your extensions. Um, and yeah, once it's accessed, guys, there's only one thing you need to do as an administrator, and that's to enable it. And once that's done, you'll have access to the extension to start building and working with it um, to create revision and um, revision control and assign item numbers. Okay. So thanks for taking the time uh, to, to listen to, to what I've got to say, basically, about the Fusion um, extension. If you've got any questions, please feel free to, you know, contact me directly or contact any of the members of the team at Symmetry. So, again, thanks very much for tuning in. Take care.